Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner and this is the Vuelta a Catalonia Stage 6. Now more than a decade or so ago, I was doing the Tour de France. We're finishing the last part of a sprint stage in the first week of the Tour. I'm in decent position but not fabulous, not up at the front. We're 2K to go and all of a sudden we go through an arch and there's some cobblestones that we come out on. I'm back there shaking my head. I can't believe it. I'm... Uh, Nobody pointed out in the team bus that there was cobblestones two kilometers from the finish of the stage. I'm too far back. Now I'm suffering. We're coming out of the cobblestones and I'm back there swinging to try to get back to the front because you know when we go into the sprint and it starts proper at the Tour de France, it's going to blow up and I'm going to lose time because I'm too far back. I salvaged the stage. Fabian Cancellara ended up winning that stage with about a 600 meters to go. He jumped away and won the stage. I get back to the team bus and I'm furious in the team bus. I'm yelling and screaming, why didn't somebody tell me that there was cobblestones this close to the finish of today's stage? Management looks at me and remember, we're, well, I'm on a team. We're just speaking a bunch of different languages. So management looks at me and they're like, why didn't you read the race Bible? I said, wait a minute. I read the race Bible. Nowhere in there does it mention that there's cobblestones. Team pulls open their race Bible, but it's in French. My race Bible was in English. French version has cobblestones marked before the finish at sprint of, today, of that stage. Mine does not. They left it out. Now, yesterday on the butterfly effect, I bring this up because yesterday in the profile that I showed you guys on the butterfly effect, taking taken from the video of the stage while I'm watching it. And I also look on the Walta profile itself. When you go there, you can look at the route and you can pull it down and have the profile. I looked at both. Both had today's stage as a category one climb. Now yesterday when I did the butterfly effect, I picked Sagan to win the stage because I thought he can get over category one. He's gonna win the stage. He's been training now. He's back from COVID. He's looking great. I bet he wins the stage. Finish the cut. If it's a small break, look for Bora Hansgrohe to bring it back for Peter Sagan. Certainly he's been easing up and he has some legs and you know he's going to want to win a stage here. Sat on the couch and rethought about it. I don't know. I don't think Sagan could get over category one. It might be hard 13 kilometers from the finish of the stage. I'm going to, re I'm going to redo the, that take, take Sagan out, and I'm going to change the prediction for tomorrow. And that's what I gave you guys on the butterfly effect. Breakaway stays off. Favorites battle it out amongst the GC. Still fighting for that top 10 position, like I said, on a Category 1 climb. Okay, I wake up today, I'm thinking the same thing. Man, we got an exciting race. They're going to bring this break back, and then we're going to have a fight for the stage and the GC on this Category 1 climb. Just before they get to the Category 1 climb, the announcer goes, on this Cat 3, and I'm thinking, Cat 3? Are you crazy? There's no Cat 3, it's a Cat 1. They changed it from the profile. So I was devastated because I had Sagan picked yesterday, but then erased them and spent 45 minutes doing retakes for the butterfly effect so I could change my prediction after I rethought about it. Now I wake up today, there's a break of five. They're rolling into the finish there. They're caught 25K before the start of the last climb. Bora Hansgro, UAE, rally team's riding. The American team rally is riding on the front too. Five, six different teams are controlling the stage as we go up a Cat 3 instead of a Category 1. Sorry for that, folks. There's no way I could have known that it was different than a Category 1 with the profile showing the way it is. Now, if we come into the finish, Sagan's in great position with 500 meters to go. He's fifth spot back there. Really looking great. Got Daryl Ampey, who's really fast. That kind of speed of Sagan, too. And, of course, you have the DSM rider there. They're fighting. UAE Team Emirates is fighting. Now, I want to point out in this picture, Sagan is now second in line, but there's three, four riders in front of him. He has Daryl Empey that's in front on the left. Jans van Rensburg is sitting to the right of Sagan's wheel. Sagan knows he can't make that gap, okay? It's too, it's too tight. There's not enough gap there. He's going to get DQ'd like he did last year in the Tour de France. Now, he backs off. He sees the gap between the DSM rider and the Quebec rider. He sees that gap. He slots back, and then he starts his acceleration, and he comes up between those two riders. 
when he's doing that, he has an inch or two on each bit of space. That is a sprinter's life. When they're coming through, they're working with inches, guys. If they're lucky, they got three on each side, but they're working with millimeters and inches here. That's a sprinter. That's what they got to do. That's what Sagan does. He shoots this gap and wins the stage in beautiful style. He's got his first win of the season. He's looking fantastic. I want to take you back to the 2020 Tour de France when Peter Sagan was relegated. In this photo, you'll see Sam Bennett in front, Walt sitting to the right of Sam, one AG2R rider behind Walt, and then Peter Sagan to the left. Sagan knows he can't make that gap. There's no space between Sam Bennett and Walt. There's not, it's not possible, so he does the exact same move that we saw today. He slots back. He waits patiently on the right. When Walt moves two inches over, and remember, we're dealing with sprinters. Two inches is a lot of space. Walt moves over two inches. The AG2R rider moves over two inches. Now it's opened up the gap for Sagan to come flying up between the barriers and Walt. Now, this is done just like if, if you're at home and you're driving your car and you're in traffic on the 405 freeway in LA and a car in front of you moves over and that lane opens, you got the freedom to go. That is what Sagan is thinking on today's stage and back last year in 2020 Tour de France. He sees the opening, he punches it. Now what happens in the, in the Tour de France when he gets relegated? Walt actually moves over two, three inches and comes off that white line and pinches Sagan into the barrier. Sagan has to go with his shoulder hard into Walt's right underneath the armpit here and push him over. That's what keeps both of them from crashing. That's also what keeps Sagan into the game. He's racing for the stage win and he's racing for the green points jersey. This is big. He's going for a record number of green jerseys here. He gets relegated from that stage and I wanted to point that out because today's stage is almost identical. Starting on the left side, it's blocked. He has to move right. He sees the opening and he punches it. Now if the DSM rider there, Max, moves over left, they're going to hit each other. That's called sprinting at the professional peloton level here in Europe. Rubbing is racing. What happened to Sagan last year was a crime. It cost him a massive amount of points and any chance of taking the green jersey after that particular stage. It altered everything we watched in Tour de France. And I just want to point it out because it's big when you watch today's stage and you compare the two. It's almost identical. The only difference is, is neither the DSM rider nor the Quebec rider moved over that inch to close that door off while Walt did move back that inch if Walt didn't want to get bumped, he should just kept that door closed the whole time and would have never left the door open for Sagan to even come up to pass to begin with. So when you watch today's stage, remember that one back from the Tour de France that cost Sagan the green jersey when he got relegated to last place on the stage. Big moment in the Tour de France and today it just reminded me of it. Seeing him win a field sprint in today's stage, that's the first time he's won outright a field sprint since that Tour de France when he should have been going for the green jersey and got robbed. That's my take on the butterfly effect. I hope you like it. Sorry for the mistake on the profile. Nothing I could do about it. it. was a great stage. Tomorrow's prediction, we saw the interview with Peter Sagan. Now, he made a little bit of a joke about he's not going to race for tomorrow. That was just a little bit of sarcasm. That guy's on good form. I think he can get over this Category 2 on the circuit that they have. I've done this, done this race before. I believe it's the same circuit that I did back in the day. If it is, he should be able to get over tomorrow's climb. If he has any teammates, my prediction, Peter Sagan wins two stages back-to-back -back here at Catalonia. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys real soon.